Overbrook Episode 7 Oberlin Street Content warning, major character death and a car accident. Obviously, Wen and I aren't the only people in town. There are a handful of them, for sure, and more show up every year, but they... don't usually last long. The longest-lasting people are Wen, me, and Loth. Unfortunately... Can I ask you something weird? If you're going to ask me why I bring a bag of day-old takeout to the old tunnel on Haywood every Thursday, I suggest you don't. I wasn't going to ask about that, but hey, since we're on the subject... When? Kidding, kidding. I'm obviously joking. Uh-huh. Proceed. Carefully. It's about what we're going to do after college. What about it? How exactly are you going to medical school? You can't really leave Overbrook, and to my knowledge, there isn't an actual medical school around here. Unless you count that chiropractic school downtown. I don't know. I figured by the time I graduated, one would suddenly appear. Really? You would go to medical school if one suddenly appeared? You. The person who is suspicious of everything and everyone if it doesn't conform to their weird set of expectations? Oh! I'm sorry. I didn't think wanting things to be consistent and stable and not fatal was a weird set of expectations. Exactly. So, how would a medical school popping into existence not be suspicious enough for you to consider not going? I don't know. I didn't think that far ahead. You didn't think that far ahead? Who even are you? Who are you and what have you done with Vincent? Oh my god, Wynn. I can't have every single thing planned out. Even I have to sort of wing it sometimes. Don't be a dick about it. Sorry, I just... I can't believe what I'm hearing right now. Why would you do pre-med if there's a chance you won't even get to the medical side? What? Are you suddenly my career advisor? Don't worry about it. That's my problem, not yours. Problem you didn't consider before declaring your major? I'm not entertaining this conversation any longer. Fine. It was just a question anyway. So, what does your career advisor say about all of it? Dr. Jen? Nothing, really. It's kind of a non-issue. Do you actually ever see your career advisor? Don't need to. Dr. Jen and I communicate exclusively through emails. Wait, really? No. Why would I waste my time with a generic? Christ. Okay, I get it. Don't catch an attitude with me just because you're not getting the answers you want. I'm not upset because I'm not getting the answers I want. Then what? I don't know. I've just been thinking about the future lately. We just finished junior year. Senior year is gonna fly by at this point. So you're just wondering what you're gonna do after college? What? No, I- It's alright. It's not a bad thing to wonder. But, I mean, you're closer to getting a job at the local museum than I am going to medical school. At least the museum exists. It's barely a museum. It's got, like, three exhibits, and not even good ones. The regional opulence exhibit is just a room of the shiniest rocks and minerals found in the abandoned mine. Then there's the charred lady exhibit, which is a glass case of what might be the remains of a Miocene ancestor. But no one's really sure. To me, it looks more like rocks fused together in the vague shape of a woman. Those sound like tourist attractions. Thanks. What's the third attraction? The third exhibit is a small 5x5 five five room with the preserved original journal of Earl Durin. Who? You're kidding, right? He's THE old miner. Wow. So everything at the museum is rock-related. What do you expect from an old mining town? I don't know. Maybe the world's largest copper deposit or some shit? Why is Earl Duran even important anyway? Do you really not know? You think I pay attention to history in a town like this? I feel like that's exactly why you should pay attention to history. But, okay. So, like, what do you know about the strike of 1832? 
Didn't even know there was a strike. There was, and every miner in town was a part of it. Since they all were being forced by company managers to push deeper into the mines to meet quota, until safety became a massive issue. The canaries they brought didn't even survive very long. Not because there was a gas leak or coal dust or something, but because their hearts would just suddenly stop. Wait, canaries? As in birds? Yeah? Is that the most interesting part of the story to you? When... when was the last time you've even seen an animal? There's Einstein. Einstein doesn't count. He acts too human for a cat. The other day, I watched him buy a can of tuna with a $5 bill and then wait for his change. What? Where did he get the money from? How did he even get his change? He had a cat-sized fanny pack around his waist. The Eric at the cashier just reached in for the money and then put the change back in there. Anyways, the point is, there are no animals in Overbrook. You might hear birds chirping in the morning, but you'll literally never see one. Yeah, I know. So then where did these canaries come from? Honestly, I don't know. I never thought about it like that. That there was a point in Overbrook history where animals did exist. You'll pay attention to history class, but not to the world around you? Hey, I pay attention. I'm basically the most attentive person ever. Sure you do. So then what happened to the birds? Why did their hearts stop? That was never figured out. But the prevailing theory is that they stopped from fright. Ugh. Creepy. What was in those mines? Is it written in Earl's journal? You would think so, but no. There's almost nothing in Earl's journal that makes sense. He goes on for entire pages about how the crimson sky would stop the day a lighthouse of dying appears. What the fuck does that even mean? Your guess is as good as mine. But yeah, that's the third attraction. Exhibit. Fuck, now you've got me saying it. Anyway, the journal is there because it's the last known piece of information we have of him before Earl and all the other miners suddenly disappeared. What? All of them? Yep. Now do you see why it's important to know history? I never said it wasn't. I'm just not interested in the history of this town. That's fair. But that part's a little more interesting, right? What? What are you staring at? Hmm? Nothing. Don't worry about it. Vincent, you're not even reading. I can see you looking away at something behind me. What is it? What do you see? I see you being annoying. <sighs> just don't worry about it. Why won't you just tell me? Because every time I do tell you not to do something, or to stay away from someone, or not go somewhere, you do it anyway. It's like watching you open up Pandora's box every single time. I'm sick of the antics. Fine. When? where are you going? I've got work in an hour. If you're just gonna sit here in absolute silence, might as well go somewhere where I'm actually wanted. Wait. If I tell you, you have to promise not to do something stupid. I promise. Okay. Turn around, but slowly. You see the Oberlin street sign behind you? Look at the shadow. Uh, which one? Exactly. It's got a duplicate shadow. Now, I don't know what that means. It could be nothing, but just in case, I'm sort of watching it. Is it always there? Like, every day? No, it just comes out at 2 p.m. for an hour. It's kind of like that extra step at the park. How did you even notice it? I was sitting here with a nice coffee like a year ago when I noticed every generic crossing the street to avoid it. So I figured it was worth keeping an eye on. What happens if you cross it? Probably nothing good. I've thrown rocks across both shadows, but nothing ever happens. Huh. Have you tried throwing rocks at the pole? Uh, no, actually. I didn't think of that. You didn't think of that? The generics were avoiding the shadow, not the pole. I didn't think there was anything dangerous about it. Okay, fine. That's fair. I'll let you have that. When? what are you doing? Looking for a rock. 
Well, be careful. You're getting dangerously close to the shadow. How do you know which shadow is the fake one? Uh, I kind of use my own shadow as a frame of reference. Whichever direction my shadow is supposed to be pointing because of the direction of the sun and the other isn't has to be the real shadow. Alright, so... Uh, that one's the real shadow. Man, you have terrible aim. Shut up! These are practically pebbles. It's really hard. Then just get closer. I thought you didn't want me to get close to it. I don't want you getting close to the shadow. The pole, I'm pretty sure, is fine. Alright, fine. Anything weird happen yet? Uh, no. It's kind of underwhelming. I'm gonna touch it. Oh my god, I fucking knew it. I knew you were just going to ignore me anyway and do something stupid. What? Is there suddenly something wrong with being curious? You ever heard the one about what curiosity did to the cat? That whole rhyme ends with, but satisfaction brought it back. I'm not doing this again, Wynn. I'm not. Call me when you're on the verge of death or something. Or don't. Maybe after you're satisfied, you'll be brought back to life just like the cat. Don't feel any different after touching it. Well, that's that, I guess. You're lucky I'm nice enough not to ignore your calls. Wow. I'm just calling to say that nothing happened when I touched the ball. Really? Mm-hmm. I even knocked on it a few times. Nothing weird about it. Just a good old reliable street sign pole. That can't be right. Why would any of the generics completely avoid it if it were harmless? I'm not sure, but... Okay, I may have spoken too soon. What? I've got my own little double shadow situation going on. And now all the generics are avoiding me. Perfect. What did you expect? Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. But it's not really doing anything, though. I mean, it's matching my movements perfectly. Give it time. I'm sure it'll try to strangle you in your sleep eventually. Vincent, that's not funny. Neither is being ignored all the time. I don't ignore you all the time. You do. You absolutely fucking do, and it drives me nuts. Figure this out on your own, Win. I'm done. Thank you. Come again. Holy shit. Oh. Right, it's just you. My second shadow. Did you just knock those cups over? I mean, you're lucky it's just plastic, otherwise it would be coming out of my paycheck. <laughs> uh, well, our paycheck, I guess. You're not... You're not going to be like that reflection, right? Or try to strangle me in my sleep? Nothing, huh? Don't know what I expected. Ow, what the hell? What was that? There's literally nothing... Ugh, oh, shit. What do you want, Wen? Hey, so, uh, fun question. You wanna hang out with me at work? No. Okay, I deserve that. Can you at least help me close? What's wrong? Your shadow isn't destroying the merchandise, is it? No, not exactly. N not on purpose, at least. What do you mean, not on purpose? It's hard to explain. Try me. Okay, so you know how everything has a shadow, but shadows aren't, like, tangible? Or at least they shouldn't be. You can't really touch a shadow. Yeah? Well, I can. 
Or more like every time my shadow touches another shadow. You can feel it like it's right in front of you. Exactly, yes. Uh, okay. That's weird. Yeah. So I kind of need your help closing. How is this suddenly my responsibility? It's just closing. I need you to move as many things that cast a shadow out of the way so I can leave. It's like a laser field for me, but with shadows. Okay, fine. When do you close? Uh, in about two hours. Okay, I'll be there in 30. Wait, what happens if everything around you is dark? Like, if there's no light source, I mean. Uh, I didn't think of that. You know what? Uh, why don't I help you close early? Uh, we can get you home before the sun sets. Uh, good thinking. Uh, see, see you soon. When? I'm back here. You okay? I'm fine. It might not look like it, but there's a phantom object jabbing me on one side and something sharp pressing up against my arm. Why don't you sit down? Couldn't get to the chair without risking possible decapitation. Why are you standing so far away? I don't want to touch your fake shadow. It might be contagious. You know, I'd be offended if I weren't a little scared right now. You should be. Why did you have to go touching that pole? I just didn't think anything would happen. Well, it did. Like it always does. Do you think that this is going to wear off at any point? Who knows? But in the meantime, you're going to have to start sleeping with your lights on. I'll start clearing things out and make an exit path for you. I just don't get how this works. Everything has a shadow. It's just areas where light doesn't hit. Technically, under my clothes, it's all shadow. Ew, I don't need that mental image. You know what I mean. <sighs> well, does your shadow act on its own at all? Not even a little bit. It just follows me perfectly till it hits another shadow. <sighs> That's got to be a relief. At least it's not like that one reflection. That's what I said! But this is more of an inconvenience than anything else. Yeah, an inconvenience to me. I don't want to have to keep clearing out exits for you. I'm sure it'll just be this one time. Uh-huh. You mean like when you were sure nothing was going to happen by touching that pole? Hey, I'm already suffering the consequences of my actions. Pretty sure I'm the only one suffering here. Okay, I, th I think that should be good enough. What else do you need to do to leave? Uh, count the money in the register. I can handle that, though. Of course you could. Just leave all the heavy lifting for me. I owe you my life. I want that in writing. Let's see. 20, 30, 40, 50, 50 85, 60, 65, and... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 5. 82 cents. Uh, all right. That's done. Vincent, you ready to go? Hey, I thought you said your shadow doesn't move on its own. Huh? It, it doesn't. I literally just saw it turn its head. Then it turned back when it saw me watching. Oh, that's not good. Maybe it just doesn't like being watched? Did it... Did it do anything before I got here? I mean, I think it did, but it stopped. What did it do? Nothing. It just knocked over a couple of those novelty cups on the shelf. But that was it, I swear. You don't have to defend it, when Just because it's in the vague outline of your body doesn't mean it's friendly. It could be. You thought the same thing about your reflection. Okay, maybe I had the wrong idea about that guy. But I've been with this one for a few hours. And really, it hasn't done anything that suspicious. Right, guy? See? It's shaking its head. That's because you shook your head. And he's following, which means I'm in complete control. You're not even in control of whether other shadows can hurt you. Oh, you see? This. This is what I meant. This is what I meant when I said I was sick of the antics. You would never listen to me. I, I what? Just... You just what, when? You just thought it would be fun? 
You thought it might be a cute little haha joke to try and prove me wrong even at the expense of your own life? What? What is it, Wynn? Enlighten me. I just wanted to help. <sighs> Never mind. It doesn't matter. I'm an idiot, as always. I didn't say that. You don't have to. You just needed me to clear out the exit for you, right? Well, that's done, so hurry up. We, we still have to get you home. Um, do you think you can turn off the lights as soon as I get out? Finally, something easy for me to do. So your shadow can move physical things as if they're a physical entity, and you can feel shadows even if the physical option isn't in front of you. That looks to be the case, yeah. Ow! What was that for? I didn't do anything. So then what hit me this time? That's a shadow person. I think you bumped into a shadow person. There's no person attack. Is that allowed? Oh god, there's more. Uh... Hey guys, I don't want any trouble here. Sorry for bumping into you, I'll just be on my way now. Hey! Leave him alone! When could you try fighting back just a little bit here? Ow! What? You want me to swing into thin air? It's not thin air if it's hitting you. Alright, got it. I can't... I can't hit back. What do you mean you can't hit back? My shadow isn't following me, it's just standing there. Hey, you! Pull your fucking weight, you're letting Wynn's ass get beat. Well, now you're kicking me. Shit, sorry, listen, uh, th let's just run. He has to stay attached to you either way, right? So let's, let's just go. <sighs> you, you okay now? <sighs> yeah, thanks. Christ. How many different kinds of shadows are we going to have to stay on the lookout for? Hopefully not people. shadow. Right. This episode was written by me, Reese Tirado. Voice of Vincent was me again, Reese Tirado. Voice of Wynn was Chris Quimby. If you'd like to support the show, please join our Patreon, which will be linked in the show notes.